He's only taller than me because he's on like a wheelie stand, right? Hello. Um, okay. Back to uh, back to these this week. So we have been looking at the bones of the skull. And the next thing we want to do is to talk about the joints between the bones of the skull because they all have names. And uh, these are called sutures. They're interesting because these joints between bones have evolved to move as little as possible so as to protect what's inside here. Whereas many of the joints in the body between bones have evolved to give us lots of movement, right? So these sutures are fibrous joints and the two flat bones that form up a suture tend to have like a wiggly edge and those wiggles match the wiggles of the adjacent bone perfectly because they've grown together like a jigsaw puzzle and then we have collagen fibers strung across between them to tie them together so these are the sutures the fibrous joints between the flat bones and we'll see some of the bones of the the skull here so we will look at not all of the sutures, there's a lot. We will look at the major sutures, so on this skull we can see them clearly and then we'll have a look to see what they look like on a plain white skull. We will look at the major ones, talk about some of the major features and then you will notice two trends. One, there's a lot of them and I would never remember them all anyway. Two, um, the naming convention for most of the sutures is very straightforward and you can take your knowledge of the names of the bones and then apply them to the names of most of the sutures. That's what we'll do. Oh, all right. All right then, major sutures first, then minor. Oh, um, so while this is a nice, colorful, model of the skull and the sutures look super clear um, often they're a lot wigglier and not quite as defined as we might like some one interesting thing this can lead to is to like extra bones wormian bones or sutural bones that is that the sutures are so wiggly that they end up kind of going around in a circle particularly where multiple sutures meet and form a little diddy bone in between the major bones and these bones don't have specific names. They, you know, they're not common, but they do occur. I don't know if I can see, I don't think I can see any on here. Uh, but yeah, those are wormian bones or sutural bones. Okay. So, the major sutures are, this is the coronal suture here, because it's like putting a crown on. You know, coronal means crown, like Think about a tiara, you know, a crown sat over the top here. And then this is the sagittal suture. So Sagittarius, the archer, if you get hit by an arrow, padunk. So this midline suture, this is the sagittal suture here. And where these two sutures meet, this is called the, the bregma. Um, and sutures allow for growth, right? So in the, the fetus and in young babies and children when they're growing, there's a fontanelle here, a soft spot, the bregmatic fontanelle. Um, so on the white skull, there's the face. So coronal suture, sagittal suture. So these sutures then are between the frontal bone and the parietal bones. Posteriorly, back here, we have the occipital bone and the sutures are making a pretty distinctive upside down Y shape or upside down V shape. So the Greek letter lambda uh, is similar to this. So this gets called the, uh, the lambdoid suture. So the lambdoid suture is the V meeting the sagittal suture, so then separating mostly the occipital bone from the two parietal bones or connecting them. So the suture here gets called the lambdoid suture, oid meaning shaped, so like lambda shaped. And then the whole, so this point here where we have the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture meeting, this gets called lambda. So lambda and bregma. And if we grab the white skull, there's the face, turn posteriorly. So there's the 
the lambdoid suture between the occipital bone and the parietal bones. There's the sagittal suture. And where they meet, that point there is lambda. And look how wiggly these sutures are. This, this is a thick bone here, the occipital bone. We've got a really, really strong joint between these bones here. This is a tough part of the skull. Okay. Um, now, if we look laterally, we have the temporal bone here and the parietal bone here. And there is a suture connecting those two. And this is the flat part of the temporal bone. So the squamous part of the temporal bone, because the temporal bone is quite complicated. It's got various bits. Uh, so the squamous part of the temporal bone meets the parietal bone at the squamosal suture. So this is the squamosal suture here. Now anteriorly, this gets quite interesting. So this red bone here, this is the sphenoid bone. So the sphenoid bone is a single central bone there. And we see it here laterally. And look, we've got lots of sutures here because we've got the sphenoid bone surrounded by a number of different bones. So the squamous part of the temporal bone, the suture between that part and the sphenoid bone is the sphenosquamosal suture. All right, sphenosquamosal suture. This is the parietal bone. Look, that also meets the sphenoid bone. So we have the sphenoparietal suture. And then we have the frontal bone here. The sphenofrontal suture connects those two bones. And this is formed kind of like, you can almost kind of see a wiggly H shape of sutures here. And this region, that whole collection of sutures there where they meet gets called the pterion, pterion, pterion with a P because it's referring to um, the wings of the sphenoid bone, um, teri winged. So the pterion here then, because we have these sutures, that's a potential weakness. In reality, in the human skull, the bones here are very thin. So there's a weakness here anyway. So this is a very weak part of the skull, a blow to the side of the head is dangerous. There's also um, a meningeal artery on the opposite side of these bones. So if those bones are fractured, there's a risk of tearing that artery and causing bleeding inside the skull. So this is a, a dangerous area, but that's the pterion. If we look at the white skull, not so easy to see now, is it? But there's the squamous part of the temporal bone. There's the parietal bone, there's the frontal bone. So in here, here's the sphenoid bone. So sphenosquamosal suture, sphenoparietal suture, sphenofrontal suture. So that's the pterion there. So here's a good landmark. There's your cheekbone. This is superior to that, right? Anterior part of the temporal region, anterior temple. We don't, we don't use the word temple in anatomy. Okay, while we're in this region and we're talking about the cheekbone, look, here's the zygomatic bone in yellow. And we said that the brown bone here was the temporal bone. So we have these processes meeting here. So actually the zygomatic arch is made up of the processes of two bones and they meet here at a suture. This is another suture, a little suture, a little join. But this is the temporozygomatic suture here. And then we can also see the zygomatic bone in bright yellow meeting the mustard yellow of the frontal bone. So this is the frontozygomatic suture up here. This is kind of a bigger shape because we've got some curves and what have you in there. Bom, bom, bom. But yeah, those two bones are also joined by that suture there. Uh, and then the zygomatic bone also meets the sphenoid bone. So we have a sphenozygomatic suture in there as well. <laughs> okay. Um, if we look on the white skull, there's the, that zygomatic arch, the cheekbone. Just make out a suture here. So temporozygomatic suture. And then can just make out a suture here. Frontozygomatic suture here. Um, difficult to see the suture between the sphenoid and the zygomatic bone in there. Oh, but it's in, you can see it in the orbit kind of. Now, we're not quite done with the temporal bone yet. Um, 
it looks super clear on here. Um, but this part of the temporal bone is the mastoid process or the mastoid part. And where the mastoid part of the temporal bone meets the parietal bone, we have the uh, parietomastoid suture here, also parietotemporal suture. I know, I thought we'd done the temporal bone. This seems really awkward because we talked about the squamosal suture, sure. Well, we've got the flat part of the temporal bone. The squamosal suture is between that squamous part of the temporal bone and the parietal bone. The parietomastoid suture is the suture between the mastoid part of the temporal bone and the parietal bone. It gets really wiggly around here. It's often not entirely clear. It's quite variable. This is where you're most likely to find those wormian bones. And if we look at it on this, this painted, this colorful um, skull, you know, it's, it looks, it's oversimplified on here, right? But yeah, uh, parieto mastoid suture. And then we can also see that that mastoid part of the temporal bone is meeting the occipital bone. So we said that this upside down V shape was the lambdoid suture, but that ends here. So this suture anatomically, because we love naming things, between the mastoid part of the temporal bone and the occipital bone is the occipitomastoid suture. All right. And let me just look at this in 3D, right? You know, we often look at these in illustrations, in images, and then when you turn the skull around, oh, it gets really, really, you know, 3D, complicated, but important and good. So we see the lambdoid suture, and then the occipitomastoid suture, and the parietomastoid suture. So again, we've got a point where these sutures are, are meeting up, right? This is another, this is another meeting of sutures that has a name, Asterion. Asterion, it's star shaped. We've got like a wiggly star here. So this is the Asterion, that, that point there where those sutures are all meeting. All right, so look, that, so if, if the, uh, the bones surrounding the brain get called the neurocranium, um, that's most of the sutures dealt with there. You can see down here, we've also got joints between the occipital bone and the sphenoid bone and that sort of thing. I might go in, I might, so we've also got not just sutures, but also fissures and other joints and shapes and that sort of thing. So I might go into the base of the skull and what we can see inside the cranial cavity in more detail in the future. But what I've talked about there are the important bits, the most commonly talked about bits. The other stuff is, is detail. If we look at the face, which gets called the viscerocranium, the bones of the face, the big bone here in purple is the maxilla. And there's a suture between the zygoma and the maxilla. So we have the zygomatico maxillary suture here, joining these two bones. Um, the frontal bone is here. So there's a suture between the frontal bone. So we have the frontomaxillary suture is what I'm trying to say. These two bones up here are the nasal bones. We have the frontonasal suture. The lacrimal bone is the orange one in here. This has a frontolacrimal suture superiorly. And then the connection between the lacrimal bone and the maxillary bone is the lacrimomaxillary suture. Are you seeing a trend here? The trick to the name of the suture is maybe getting the two words the right way round, but you will often read them in both forms anyway. The ones I'm describing are the ones that, well, um, are the most common ones in the sources that I use. Now, um, the frontal bone and the maxilla are interesting because the frontal bone, uh, when you're born, actually has a suture, a frontal suture down the midline. You have left and right frontal bones. But I think in the first year of life, you know, as that fontanelle is, um, is starting to cover over. So that frontal suture also fuses and we have a single frontal bone. So there is a frontal suture early in life and it disappears because the bones fuse as in the suture is removed. 
And the maxilla has a similar thing. There's an intermaxillary suture. So again, the maxilla initially forms as a left and a right maxilla, one on either side, and then they fuse in the midline. And that's why we see this, this ridge here, kind of this, uh, you can, I don't know if we can palpate it, and it's variable in people. It's probably, oh, it's, um, this, is, this is a bit easier to see on the, you know, on the, on the kind of like normal skull, but there's like a ridge here, right? the anterior nasal spine. So the, the two maxillary bones have fused in the midline to become a single bone in the adult, and they've left that, that anterior nasal spine there. The, the trickiest sutures are probably gonna be around the ethmoid bone. I, I always say that I think the ethmoid bone, the very central bone in there forming the medial wall of the orbit, forming the, the, like the roof of the nasal cavity, very, very central, um, trying to, you know, be aware of where that suture is and what bones it's connecting is quite difficult. Uh, but again, you have the ethmoidal, ethmoidomaxillary suture where the ethmoid bone meets the maxilla, the frontoethmoidal suture where the frontal bone meets the ethmoid bone. Tricky, tricky, tricky stuff. Yeah, I think, I think you're getting the idea now. If you can name the bones, recognize the bones, uh, how those bones are connected to one another is via the suture, you can, particularly in the face, work out the name of that suture. Around the cranial cavity, you need to know the names of the coronal, sagittal, lambdoid, squamosal sutures, right? Okay, how's that? Clearly, there are more sutures, but we would be here all day, and I don't know how successful I'd be in even pointing them out you are now armed with the skills of naming these sutures based upon the names of the bones that they're connecting. Plus, you've looked at the major sutures up here, which have some funky names, and uh, the names of the bits where they meet. All right, that's it. So the, the sutures of the skull. See you next week. Mm -hmm.